Hey everybody, it's po- Camera Work Podcast number 11, and I'm proud of that because we're moving along with this thing and we like reached a milestone. We passed number 10, which is really cool. So my co-host, as always, is Ray Tamara. Hey, thanks for listening, guys. Right, and Ray is a New York-based paparazzo, is that correct? Uh, yeah, working photographer in New York. Anything and everything I can shoot to make money, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> right, and then we're also joined by Pete Monsanto, who was on episode six, is that correct? That's correct, episode six. Right, and what is it that you do? Um, I am a photographer who shoots mostly music, um, a little bit of everything, but my heart and joy is in live shows. Right, yep. live concert photography. That's right. Right, so we have a couple of topics we're going to talk about, and we're going to be joined by someone later on, someone that you brought to the table when I invited you back to the podcast, yeah. right? Yeah. So we have a guest coming on. He mm-hmm. is? Uh, it's my cousin, my first cousin, Kevin Turner. Uh, his name on Instagram is Turn One, and he's done something pretty remarkable over the past, I would say, month or so with uh, Instagram. Instagram. And, right. Uh, so I'll we're be excited gonna, to tell you guys a story. Right, so we're going to bring him up in a couple of minutes. Yeah. But the first. Uh, let's first just run through what happened in the previous week or really it's been about three weeks for Ray because the last episode I was in Portland Oregon and I did the podcast with some other people and then I did one with my wife so Ray anything happened in the last two weeks or so it, particularly in terms of personal work things that you've done that have not been geared towards getting a paycheck uh, no not personal work um, basically it's just been work and uh, this week I shot Taylor Swift coming out of the hotel And um, I also shot people from the Bible, which is one of the biggest shows now. Um, And they were at GMA. And um, I was just thinking about my photography, how to better my photography. And I'll probably talk a little bit about that later. Right. And it was funny because I told you Chris Brown is coming to BET tomorrow. Because to me, that's a big shot. Like at BET, that's A-list. That's like Chris Brown, Drake, Nicki Minaj, Rihanna. Right. That's A-level. Ray's just like... Tell me when Taylor Swift's going to BET. Like, I don't care about Chris Brown going to BET. Uh, I want to see Chris Brown with his shirt off, breaking windows, or crashing a car, or doing something. I right. shot him playing basketball after that incident, and that was cool. He was a real nice guy. But, you know, just a lot of the things. I used to shoot a lot of rappers and a lot of R&B cats, right. but they just don't make me money. Like right. I remember he told me, I'm not going to name the artist. Because, I don't know, if Ray wants to name him, he can. But, right. like, he's got all the gear on the street. And he's looking for, you know, like, the A-list celebs. And he runs into an artist, hip-hop artist from the Bronx. And the guy's kind of like, hey, you know, like, he kind of recognizes Ray. He's like, hey, you going to shoot me? And Ray's just kind of like, I don't really want to shoot you. you. <laughs> I'm not going to get paid for every time I press this button. Yeah, it's like I just don't need another shot of him. And even <laughs> if you shoot just hip-hop. There's guys like like Joel Santana or Jim Jones, right. like they're just always in front of your camera, and you right. shoot it, but you're kind of going to yourself like, how many shots do I have of Joel Santana over the years mm-hmm. with the bandana on his head, and yeah. it's just not something that you must must nail, right? You know. Right. It, on top of that, it's not it's not necessarily that because there's shots that you pass up. Like I, there was a fighter. He's going to be shooting Floyd Merriweather, and I passed the shot up because I didn't know who he was, and he just didn't stand out. But three days later, this man took a gun and tried to pass it in his bag through the airport and obviously if I had that shot it would be making me money now because it was him right. doing something foolish <laughs> right but and that's but you're I, very good I at that shot but you're very good at knowing who people are like compared yeah. to me especially like when I'm hanging out with you you know the people and you do a really good job of keeping track of like who's hot and who needs to be photographed I mean, just like with anything, it's just about your job and preparing for it. I wouldn't say I, I know everything. I just know certain things that I need to work on and um, just being focused on that. Right. So, Pete, anything in the last couple of weeks that you shot particularly? Actually, it could be personal or professional, either one. Um, I didn't really do any uh, concerts, which was, you know, uh, we had a few artists in town. Uh, Schoolboy Q was here. I think ASAP had a show within in the past couple of weeks. So, and I, I opted not to. I've been taking a little bit of a backseat preparing myself for uh, summer. And I know I'm going to be pretty active then, but just recently, as we discussed in the last podcast, well, afterward, I was telling you, because I have a regular job, as we discussed in the last time I was here, I'm funding my own studio. So, for the oh, last that's two cool. weeks, I've been buying lights and trying different things and eavesdropping on you and what you do and right. online. And you're getting um, Ellen Chrome, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got a set of Ellen Chrome lights. Um, I'm right. buying different things and just trying different techniques to learn how to use my lights and um, just be better at it because I, I'm, it, although I feel like I've got a good handle on it, you could always be better. 
Right, you know, and um, so those Allen Chromes are like amazing lights. That's and a they're really super good choice, light, dude. I have them. Yeah. It's, it's like a little case, and it's almost. I, I think I have textbooks heavier than both the lights. Right, it's amazing. So that's um, cool. I've been enjoying the past couple of weeks just um, spending all my money. Right, <laughs> well, for spending money. Well, for me, um, I talked about it a lot last podcast. So I'm not going to spend too much time with it, yeah. but I've been working with this friend of mine who's an author, Mitch Jackson. He was yeah. on a podcast last week and on a previous episode, and he has a book coming out called The Residue Years. So we went to Portland, Oregon. I spent about four days there. Lost a ton of money, missing BET shows and other things. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. you're you doing that? stuff that's passionate and you... you it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I got a call for a studio rental to one of the days that I was gone. Right. And I went to call Medina, who was on one of the podcasts, my right. assistant. She's in New Orleans. Right. You know, and I just texted her back. I texted her and I said, worst assistant ever. I'm this like, is you're, where you're so fired. come into play, though, because she would have definitely... <laughs> the problem was the rental included gear. So I uh, needed someone not to just kind of babysit the space, but right. someone who could technically make this the rental work. Yeah. Someone who could set up a tether and do the lights. And Medina could do that, but... My wife was not able to. <laughs> to do you're, that. You're starting, so, yeah. Plus, you know, she works. She's not going to take a day off to do the rental. She's just not. So I lost the <laughs> rental. It, it, it was such bad timing. Yeah. But I, I love the project he's doing. And I won't spend too much time on it because we yep. did talk about it on the last podcast. But, you know, we went to two different jails. And I've um, never been to a jail. And, no. you know, it was I just. On the inside. Yeah, in there, and, you know, I get to walk out, but the guy we spoke to was there for 17 years. Right. He's going to be a total of 17. He's got four to go. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're just shooting something from the heart that I care about. I love mm -hmm. Mitch Jackson's story, and I, he's got a book coming out. I want to shoot a trailer for it, like a movie trailer. One of those, like, in a world of whatever, and, yes. you know, you show all the dramatic scenes from the book. So mm -hmm. I, I want to shoot that. Again, not really a money gig, just something I want to do. So right. I, I'm pleased with that. So that's... That was the most interesting thing for me in the last couple of weeks. But again, it's on podcast number 10 okay. if you want to catch it. But the first thing we're going to talk about before we get Kevin out here is yeah. the idea of upgrading equipment. Oh, and I, I really want to break down how this process works for me and see how it works for you guys. Because okay. there's times we upgrade and there's times that we don't. And I've got these criteria in my head. And we're going to kind of just run through that, okay? Cool, cool. So, for example... So if you take Ray, you were you were shooting D2X, correct? Mm -hmm. D2Fs and D3s. Right. When D3S came out, you did not move to the D3S. Nope. But then you moved to the D4. Right. However, I had the D3. When the D3S came out, I moved to the D3S, and I did not move to the D4. So you and I took a pretty different upgrade path. So what caused you to skip the D3S, and what caused you to take the D4? Um, when I met, when I usually buy my cameras a year after it's released to work out all the kinks and also to get my money up. I mean, that's the big thing. So by the time I was ready to, for the D3S, I knew that the D4 was going to come um, around the corner. So I waited for the D4. And um, that's my path. Basically, is what's the next camera? How long I can get the most profitable usage out of it? And um, and then um, if the cameras that I do have are, are causing me to miss money shots. Now, now, this is huge because I think the upgrade path for a lot of people is they come out with a new model and you buy it. You know, they come out yeah. with an iPhone 5 and you go, oh, it's a 5, it must be better than a 4. Phones I'm going to so buy it. Phones are so intimate though, John. <laughs> right. we, listen, we'll stretch a camera out. We'll go, you know, I don't really need this new version. I'm doing right. well with this. A phone is a little bit different. Right, but the thing with the phone, too, I think, is that everyone's conscious of whether you have a 5 or a 4, meaning, like, if you pull out your 4, which is what I'm on, the 4S or whatever, yeah. like the iPhone, everywhere, everyone who sees me knows I'm on the 4 and not the 5, because everyone yeah. knows what the new iPhone is. Uh, come closer to your mic, too. But when you're talking about a camera, you know, your clients don't really know if you have a D3 or D3S or a D4. Nobody no, cares. And a couple of photographers may know, but, you know, there's a bunch of guys running around with, like, D800, there's just so much variety in the cameras that right. it's not as noticeable that you didn't upgrade. But the way you really should upgrade is what Ray said, if you're missing shots, if there's something wrong with the gear. So for example, Ray and I were both on the D2X. Mm -hmm. The D2X was terrible at low light. It was, really? oh, oh, it was unreal. Canon, oh, wow. Canon had great low light when Nikon had the D2X. We couldn't go above like 800 or 1,000 without really noticing. Green. Yeah, it was worse than green. It's like a smearing of detail. What year was this? 
not that long ago. 2004? 2004. Yeah, okay. this feels like it was recent though. But so when a D3 came out and it set an entirely new bar, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden the Canons weren't as good as the Nikons. So if you were a Nikon user, yeah, you really should have gone from a D2X to a D3 without a doubt, because it was a dramatic, a dramatic difference in what you could do photographically. Like I've shot BET from way back when I was on a D2X. I wasn't the house shooter, but I'd go periodically. Right. Right. When I look at those pictures, a lot of them were done with the flash because I couldn't go low light. I couldn't go high ISO rather. Right. Now, since I got a D3 to the D3S, I don't do anything with the flash at BET hardly. It's all right. no, no yeah. flash because I can go to 3200 if I need to. Right. Something I literally could not do on a D2X. Yeah. And I think that's a, a smart way to upgrade, right. right? What's the last upgrade of gear you made? Would it be the lighting, Pete? Um, it would be the lighting. I'm actually, as soon as I'm done with everything for uh, the studio, which would be in probably, I think, the next three weeks, I am going to have to upgrade my bodies and I'm going to the Sony A99. Right, and you're on the Sony system, different. which I personally think is smart. Not a lot of guys use them, but yep. there are a lot of guys who just kind of fell into a system and they don't really right. look elsewhere. And Ray's probably in that category where, like, Ray is not as much of a gearhead as I am. Like, I sit and I'm on these blogs, I'm reading about the gear and I'm looking at the pictures. You know, I tend to know, like, what the new body is from Canon and Nikon and Sony, but, mm -hmm. like, Ray isn't nope. that. Nope. I don't. I don't care about... Um, other people's bodies. I don't care about other people's phones. I if my Ray. phone didn't break, then I wouldn't have um, gotten a new phone. I was at an Android and I wanted to try uh, an iPhone and I drive a car. See, I'm not really pressured by my, who, what other people do. I drive a, a right. 93 right. Hoopty truck and a 91 right. Uh, Max, I uh, know a Camry, so right. it doesn't matter unless it's about making no, money. But see, then but see, this part is huge, and this is really one of the main things I want to talk about when it comes to upgrading. Is exactly what you said about what other people are doing and where this falls into place. Yeah. Say it again. Black. Which one's black? This one's still going. Okay. All right. Well, chop All right. So. So in terms of in terms of making the upgrade, in terms of what other people are doing, the issue becomes how important is that? And I have a kind of spin on this that I want to, it's going to take a minute to explain. It, okay, right. So if you look at, I use a Leica M9 for a lot of my personal work mm -hmm. and a lot of my professional work. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things I like about it. There's a lot of limitations to the camera, such as you can't focus close. The closest you can focus on any Leica lens is like two and a half feet. It's a huge um, problem when you're shooting, at least for me, because I can't get as close as I want. If I can touch you, I can't photograph you. That's my rule, because I'm too close to you if I can touch you. So I'm always kind of touching, or not really touching the subject, but kind of sticking my arm out to measure that distance. And it's always like a foot and a half further away than I want to be. It's a big limitation. It's hard to shoot action with the M9 because you have to manually focus it. So you're missing any shots of people moving around. And you don't take the lens off. Fixed no, no, no. It's no. I've got a. I have a 21, 24, 35, a 50, a 75, and a 90. You've got like six lenses. Like maybe a 75 or something. If you See, but he's to do what you're saying. He, he yeah. he's so enamored with shooting close. Like if he if right. I was working with John, I would physically get in a fight with him because he's working <laughs> too close. Like he's crowding the space so much and right. blocking the shot from other people. Right. Like you have 10, 15 people trying to get a shot and if there's right. one guy that's right next to him, right. that pretty much eliminates But 10 fortunately, people. I don't shoot that much with other people. Like at BET, mm -hmm. 70, 80% of the time, I'm the only person there. Right. And even when other shooters are there, I get these moments where like I can shoot and they can't because they've got like a press guy and I kind of get this free reign and then I shoot a lot in the studio so I but like you say yeah I do tend to shoot really close and I love wide shooting but <clears throat> but I'm not getting what you're saying Pete about the 75 millimeter lens. Well, I mean if like you're saying you can't shoot as close as you want right. right and because of the focus but if you just go from let's say the 20 to a 75 you can get a tighter shot. No the tight so, shot isn't the issue it's more a matter of perspective okay. and even again even with the 75 you're two and a half feet away and you, you just, it, it's very limiting at times. And again, and you're limited by the fact that you have to manually focus. Yeah. So those are limitations I understand with the camera and I'm fine with those limitations and some of the other limitations. They don't bother me. I work around those limitations and I did a video called Understanding the Appeal of the Leica M9 where I went into detail about how a limitation can really help you sometimes. So that's not the problem. Now when you get to the M9, there are other problems that are not fun problems. These are problems that are really annoying. For example, 
if I go to auto white balance in almost any situation and I shoot 10 pictures, five will have one kind of color and the other five will have really? a totally different color. Is it all about the focus point? Is that why it changes it? No, no, the camera doesn't know where you're focusing in an electronic sense because it's right. such a manual type camera. Yeah. It just has a bad auto white balance sensor. So if right. I go to the Jiu Jitsu school where I train at Marcelo Garcia right. and I shoot with my Nikon, every photo will get completely correct white balance. I don't yeah, do any color same. correcting on yeah. auto. Yeah. I bring out the Leica, the first three are green, the next one's blue, and then they're back to green, then they're blue, then they're green. And I'd be fine if they were all green, because I can correct that. I'd be fine if they were all blue. But when they're constantly changing, mm -hmm. extremely frustrating. And there's a skin tone problem with the camera sometimes where it's reading this like, almost like an ultraviolet light sensor. You know, it's wow. like the way like if you go to the doctor for a skin problem, they put this ultraviolet light on your skin and they can right. see blemishes. Yeah. The camera seems to do that where it's pulling out like blood vessels from people's skin and they're right. showing up more than they should. Happens mostly with white people. When I'm shooting anyone with a darker complexion, I'm good. For the most part, although sometimes the lips can show it. Right. But those are two examples of problems that I'm not fine with. Is, that, there, is there a way to manually set that white balance on there? Yeah, I, you can I set, you can dial in a, balance. no, you can right. dial in a Kelvin number, but right. you would still get the red skin tone problem. Still, oh, okay. But you can lock in a consistent white balance color, but there are times that I'm in a studio and I want to use my Leica, and the only reason I don't is because this particular model has a skin tone that's bringing out those like blood, it's like you can it just, just tell everything you don't want to see. Yeah, it's what you don't want to see, but then I'll pull out my Nikon. <laughs> it's a little too perfect. And I'm not seeing that. But in any event, so those things make me want to upgrade to the next Leica body. You follow? Because there's an actual problem with the camera. Mm -hmm. So I want to make an upgrade. But here's the thing. So as you start reading reviews of the new camera, which is the M, and you're trying to find, well, does it solve these problems? You start reading other things, and Zach Arias, are we both familiar with him? Yeah, yeah. Right, so he's a blogger, photographer based in Atlanta, and he does a really good blog. So he wrote a review and he said that the Fuji X100 okay. is the new Leica. And it was interesting for me to read, because he didn't go into that much detail about it, but it did get me to thinking that, like, well, maybe this is the new hot camera. So you're saying you don't get that influenced by what this is Ray says. He doesn't get that influenced on what other people are doing and saying, right? And I think sometimes you do have to look at it, but where do you stand on that, Pete? Do you look at the fact that say 90% of the world's on Nikon and Canon and you're on Sony, yeah. do you care? Uh, no, I don't care. I actually appreciate my Sony because what some people may not know is that the CMOS sensors in all of your cameras are made by Sony anyway. So you right. really shoot with a Sony that just has Nikon and Canon buttons. Right. But do you ever question yourself and say, well, why so am I the only guy on Sony? I had a before from someone. They, like, I, they looked at um, one of the reviews of my pictures and said, oh, you shoot with a Sony. And I said, what's the face for? And then I show them the picture. He's like, oh, my God, wow. Right. And I said, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, almost like and I hate to even talk about like handguns, but... You know, you can use the smallest caliber weapon and hurt somebody. And still kill somebody. Yeah, and still kill them, <laughs> as opposed to using a big rifle or something like that. Right. Whatever you shoot with, if you know your tools and you know how it works and you can get the settings correct, it doesn't matter. Correct. Because you're telling me that a Fuji camera, I don't even know if they're a major player in the camera. They're about industry. to be, I think. I yeah, think they're about to be. It, it, he, and Zach is saying that it's comparable to this Leica. I'm going to have to really go into one of the camera stores and see for myself. Well, but this is what I'm talking about, yeah. about looking at the popular opinion. And here's the thing I look at. Like, there was a point we were all on flip phones. We had no yeah. apps. We weren't really messing with the camera. Now, you can argue that you should live in a cave and not pay attention to what everyone else is doing. Meaning, That's in cool. my case, you go, I like the Leica. What do I care what Fuji's doing? I love right. my Leica. I'll get the new one. I got the old one. I'm cool. But imagine if you were on a flip phone mm -hmm. and someone next to you is saying, oh man, you got to get this iPhone because it's got Facebook and it's got Instagram and Twitter. You just go, don't care. Yeah, I'm going to need you to tell me why though. But you're but just, suppose you don't care at all. You're just like, I'm fine mm -hmm. with the phone. I don't need it. Like you could be living in a cave and not paying attention to the fact that everyone else has moved on to these phones that have apps. Because I mean, weren't we all fine with the smartphones? I mean, with the flip phones? I was fine with it until you start seeing the convenience and how it right. works for you. That's what I mean. But this, so this is what I'm saying. So yeah. the, the, the problem that I get is trying to strike the balance sometimes between mm -hmm. living in the cave and saying, you know, I like my Leica and this is what I'm going to stay with versus sometimes looking at the popular opinion 
and reading a bunch of bloggers who go, you know, this Fuji is the hot new Leica style camera. Right. And being influenced by that. And the cool thing, it sounds cool to go, you know, I'm not influenced by those outside opinions. Right. But in some ways you should be. Yeah. Because just like with the phone, if you weren't influenced by looking at what other people are doing, we would also be on a flip phone. Because right. we were fine with the flip phone. That's we true. were like, this is the greatest invention in the world. I can flip it open and make a call. Yeah. But we saw other people doing these amazing things with the iPhones and the Androids and, you know, the HTCs and, and stuff. If you're into gadgets, it's going to pique your interest. Ray simply right. does not. Well, he wanted to try Apple, but I don't think his motivation was because someone said this is cool. Right. Ray yeah, he's not as fan. swung by that, but he doesn't sit and read all these reviews the way I do. So for me, I do end up getting that battle sometimes. So I wish I could say, you know, I don't get influenced when I read it, but I do. I do get influenced when I read those opinions because sometimes it is smart to see what everyone else is doing. Sometimes there's a reason why. 90% of the world is on the Fuji and they're right, but other times you're right for just following your own path and doing what you do. Right. So that's the struggle that I go through personally mm -hmm. with it all. And again, I think that's different for everyone. But I think the real bottom line is what Ray said, if you're missing shots, and for me, I do miss shots with the Leica because the skin's purple, right. then maybe it is time to upgrade or move to a different system. Yeah. You know, I think, I think as a photographer, and if this is what you do for a living, then you have to do your due diligence. You have yeah. to explore other options, especially if the, the, the tools that you have are not performing. So I, I do, when it's time to look at a, a another camera or another phone or whatever, another piece of lighting, I do research it and right. see if this is a, the right phone for me. Right. And um, I use it, I play with it, and if it isn't, then I walk away from it. Right. But the thing you got to keep in mind too, though, is if we look at this as an artistic profession, then the rules do change where you say, you know, if I use this as an artistic tool, maybe it doesn't matter if I'm missing some shots because it's art and I have time to do it. Again, a right. sculptor doesn't say. It'd be a lot faster if I just, you know, drew a picture of this girl. He's standing there carving it out because that's well, how he chisel. expresses the art. With right. a chisel, you know, or a poet. He doesn't say, you know, if I didn't make this rhyme, I could get this story done in two seconds. No, he fights through the problems and says, my artistic tool is poetry, and I'm gonna make this rhyme, and I'm gonna spend a year trying to make this one poem rhyme, rather than just say it without rhyme and be done in two seconds. So, artistically, I think we have a different criteria than we do professionally. So that gets a little complicated, okay? But let's move to social media yes, now. Yes, so, okay. and I think you and I, Pete, have somewhat different opinion about yeah. the value of social media, mm -hmm. right? So, and Ray, I think, is on a whole different page. So we're gonna see where Ray stands in this too, but why don't you start? How does it work or not work for you? Um, I think it works greatly. Uh, when we talk about the social media aspect of everything, uh, we talked a little bit about the gadgets. Everything is now built in. Your Facebook and every like the things that we do is really driven about sharing. Even you know some of I don't know your service providers for TV, they have widgets that you can do things and connect to your social media. Right. Because everything is we are a part of the information age now. Right. So it's internet speeds are faster. These phones are faster. You're not just sending small bits of data and text messages anymore. You're sharing video. You're sharing. Uh, pictures. So with that aspect, the social media can get a little bit annoying, but it's good for me for the uh, the quick turnaround time. Like, right. Which is the great, one that you prefer the most? Oh, I, Instagram. Right. And why Instagram? That, what does it do for you professionally? Not in terms of just fun. What does it do for you professionally? Well, it allows me to just uh, put up and shut up. Um, I, and I say that loosely, it's just really because on Twitter, I, you can almost, you can fabricate your entire life by just saying a bunch of things that are cool and people start to pay attention to you. Right. But you can't fake the pictures. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if I'm somewhere and I'm doing something and I'm photographing, I put it up on Instagram, people can see it. Right. But the part, but there is a part that can be faked. For example, like a lot of times I'll follow people that I meet. I kind of like the idea of I met you one time and then I follow you forever and just kind of keep track of what you're up to. And sometimes I'm doing a shoot with a model that's not a so-called real model. She's not really making money. And you watch these girls posting on their Instagram. Every week they're showing another shoot and they're there with the lights and the makeup and all of this. But it's not real in the sense that she's not doing a shoot that's getting published. She's not doing a shoot that's generating any money. There's no real client. It's just some dude who bought some lights photographing her in a garage, whatever. 
And she can present it on Instagram as if she's a real model, really making money. And you can fake it. Like, I can see through it, but how many That's people are following her are thinking, oh, she's a model? Like, you're not really a model. You're a girl who created this fantasy on Instagram. But on Twitter, you can really talk it up, and people can't see through it mm -hmm. because it's just words. On Instagram, you can see through it. You know, you know what? This chick's a little bit of a half ass. She's not really who she says he is. For you, I, you put up some of your snapshots from BET and you say, hey, I'm here now. This is who's on the show. Right. You can't fake that. Right. You can't see through it. You're really standing there. Right. And you're really doing this. Right. For So in that way, it, it, the Instagram, the buffer includes, well, there's a lot of things you think you can fake. But most people know. Right. But there's another element that bothers me, which mm -hmm. is this element that it should be a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. And I disagree with that photographically. I don't mind it as much on Twitter if I'm just... Because on Twitter, I might just put like a funny thought and just write something. Because like last night, they had that Charlton Heston, Ten Commandments it's very movie. funny on Twitter. That's a funny movie. Mm -hmm. I might have thought of something funny and posted that up there. And I like the back and forth interaction right. if I do that. But on Instagram... If I'm a photographer, mm -hmm. I'm looking for an audience to look at my pictures. I'm not necessarily looking to like look at your pictures and have this sort of dialogue. Like I'm liking your stuff and you're liking mine, and maybe it's snobbish, but I just look at it like a comedian, a stand-up yeah. comic. Is he supposed to do his set and then walk off set and now listen to the audience's jokes and laugh at their jokes? Like he's the comedian, oh, they're the audience, and, and that's why I brought Kev with me today because he's definitely going to talk. About well, yeah, he. We're going to get to him because yeah. when I saw his ratio of followers to following, it's ridiculous, it's insane. <laughs> and this is another thing that bothers me, which, in my opinion, falls a little bit in that category right. of faking because you can get a lot of likes on Instagram right. if you follow a lot of people. Right. You know, if your ratio is kind of fifty-fifty, meaning a thousand people follow you, you follow a thousand people, and you like a whole bunch of pictures in the course of the day that you're gonna generate a lot of likes, which Correct. to me shows the flaw in the system because people are liking your shots because you like theirs. They're not just independent. Because if you didn't like their pictures, if you didn't follow them and did not like their pictures, you would not be generating likes. Yeah. So so again, you take my Instagram feed. I don't really like anybody's pictures. No. I just don't. I just just whatever. funny comments under my stuff. Which yeah, I you're one of the few welcome. people I comment on because yes. you write stuff that's funny and then I end up coming back at you trying yes. to make a joke. And it's good. Right. But my yeah, wife good. my wife probably has like a third the number of followers that I do. Right. Any picture she gets she puts up gets way more likes than I do. Yeah. And I've got more followers than her. The only difference between us is she likes a lot of people's photos right. and she has a conversation with them in those likes. Right. And I don't. Well, I throw the, my the content up and that's it. The interaction on Instagram is through the likings and the comments. Right. Whereas which, on Twitter, you feel like you're talking directly to the person. In Instagram, you have, I am talking directly because you still act in the same way. Right. It's just through the picture. Either about the picture or right. something you said. Right, but I don't, picture. again, just for me, I feel like a stand up comic listening to the audience's jokes. Yeah. Like, I might be kind of curious to see this person that I came across, a model, makeup artist, whatever, mm -hmm. and see what they're up to. But I just don't feel a need to say I like the photograph because right. I don't Do you really, just not like anything? I just don't. I just kind of skim through it. I go no, on about my day. Like, I don't do stand you, there. Do you really not like it? But it's just photographically, nice. as photographic art. No, I don't like the pictures. I might want to see them, <laughs> but as photography, no, I don't. They're not great photographs all the time. It's just, oh, this is what he's up to. This is what she's up okay. to. But I just have a problem commenting. You know they're going to think you're a snob after this. I know they're going to think I'm okay. snobbish. I get it. I believe it. But so, Ray, why are you virtually ignoring Twitter and Instagram? Because when and Facebook, it's because when I see pictures of other people doing stuff, then I get jealous because I'm not doing it. So I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to live the life, the most guy. interesting life. So I don't want to follow other people and be jealous about that. I want to be out there and. Right. Being out there means not being at the computer. And I love your honesty there because I feel the same way very often. And when I try to explain it to like my wife or to certain people in my life, sometimes they'll look at it and go kind of like, oh, like you have this negativity inside of you and it's a problem. And I acknowledge that I can be negative at times and it can be hurtful. But one of the ways I explain it is if you think of a woman who's trying to have a baby and she's going to fertility clinics and she's trying all these different methods, whatever. Okay, she doesn't hate other women who have children. However, she may not necessarily want to go to the park and sit in the room with a bunch of women who are taking care of their baby and pushing them on the slides and the swings. And that's how I feel. It's like, 
it's like you said, I don't hate the fact that you're in Miami photographing Kate Upton. I just don't necessarily want to spend my time looking at it right. because that's what I want to do. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. And well, that is we something... all look at Kate Upton, though. Let's just be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, um, besides that, I, I think that for me, everything has to, and it, maybe I'm dogmatic and just focus, but for me, posting my photos don't make me money maybe right. because i don't know how to make it money like i've been right. part of the internet if you know my history then i've done a lot of stuff with the internet i've started communities and that's how i got started in photography right you actually had a site called the crusade.net which yeah. was extremely popular it was like a message board and you were really one of the first people that was showing party pictures because there's a whole thing now of these sites like where to party at dot com like you take a picture now and people go are like well what site is it going to be on you were really one of the first people who had a website that did that and you would shoot like groups of people at parties and get the name of each person and then email each person the link to the picture it was a tremendous amount of work and you really were one of the first people doing that now it's huge but yeah. you you killed yeah, the site no, it's at some basically point basically pre it was like a pre facebook and and but i didn't know how to make money off of it so i transitioned to something that i can make money and for for me i can make money taking pictures mm -hmm. i i can't make money liking pictures or following other people's right. um, feeds and and, and and I I readily admit there are ways to make money. There are people who are making a lot of money, like a person that I know um, that started another site is making like twenty grand in advertising. That's wow. not me. So <laughs> if if I can't do it, then I'm trying to figure out how I can make twenty grand on my own. Right. And um, and right. just taking it from there. And it's not with Instagram. And until I can learn how to do that right. then you just I, you know, i'm not, not really well, it's like who cares honestly it, it, right. it, for me it, it does work people see the pictures and hey uh, i want to do a shoot with you What's right but email? see one of the problems i have with that though is that yeah, people I mean, spend a lot of time on instagram or facebook or yeah, whatever you know, and yet yeah, and they do get work from it but the thing is is like again if you spend six days a week at jujitsu you're going to get work from there too people are going to be like you know Hey, you, you shoot, I got a wedding coming up or whatever. What's you know? a jujitsu? Someone, I mean, like you obviously you care about it. Right. What's it going to pay you? Now, granted, your shots are great. If you just even did just an ounce of social media and people would say, oh, you know, I need, and then you can cut like these side deals where you're getting an extra gob of money in, in, in addition to what your royalties would be from the agency anyway. Right. Just one last point I want to make about social media before we bring in Kevin. Just one last point, though, that kind of irks me when I say about people faking it on Instagram and Twitter and yep. why it bothers me is so last week I had a guy named P Frank or Frank Williams on the podcast this is a real person like he he produces um unsung for TV one which is a cable channel he yep. produced American Gangster that a lot of us have seen great show wrote some books he actually wrote a book about the Snoop Dogg murder trial as I was talking to him in the car oh, one day yeah. I ordered it on my phone right away I'm like I gotta read this book like, right. and he was a East West Coast editor of the source magazine like he's not on Twitter he's not on Instagram right. but he's a real guy really doing stuff and again sometimes these people who seem like I'm so busy I'm so busy posting all this stuff on Instagram and mm -hmm. Twitter they're nowhere near as legitimate as a guy like that. I understand, and I'm totally because sorry. you can fake it there. And some people who are very successful are not wasting time on it. So that that's just some of the bad like okay. it. But let's bring in Kevin, who is doing something really interesting on Instagram and Twitter, and let's understand who he is and what his story is, and so on and so forth. Why don't you set it up first, Pete, okay. and then we'll let Kevin talk. Uh, I would probably chop it. Go. So, Kevin, tell us a little bit about what is it that you do? Tell us first where we can find the Instagram feed and where can we find the... Just work me... What is the Instagram name and just tell me what it is that you do and well, how you get started. My Instagram feed is on uh, Instagram.com slash turn one. Spell that for us. T-U-R-N-O-N-E. So, um, you can find pretty much all my photos there through Instagram. I also have my own website, turn1photo.com. Right, now, the, I, I got a glance at the photos today, and the photos looked really, really good, but before we get to that, the more interesting part to me was the ratio of followers to um, followings. So how many followers do you have, and how many people are you following on Instagram? I have 
27,000 followers, yep. and I follow about maybe 420. I can't remember what the last count was. Right. Now, to me, that's the ratio that we want on Instagram. Right, that's right. the ratio I want. I don't that's want a, to follow. That's the ratio that people who do reality TV want, and you <laughs> right. seem to just be my cousin who has it. Because right. it's a better ratio than you have as a full-time professional photographer. Yeah. It's a hundred yes. times better ratio than I have. How did you accomplish that? Because, um, and unlike, you, unlike you guys were saying, um, with um, it's a it's a social network, so you have to be social. I have to give some likes out to people, um, but really, I'm on there for the photographs and not to talk and not to write twit grams about how my mother was doing. I'm all about the image. Right. right. Um, what, what let me bring you, you closer to the mic. Okay. What, do you, what do you actually do? Um, what's, what's your normal day? Are you uh, all about the photos? Do you have a regular job? Like what? Yeah, I have a regular job. Um, me and my wife have a cleaning business, and okay. that's what I do. And I also do graphics part time, and I do photographs. When people ask me, I do headshots. Right. Pretty much anything visual. I make business cards, I make websites. Right. But how did you. How long did it take you to develop a large following yeah. on Instagram? Probably. I've noticed this. In probably the past. like a year, but that's what I was going to go into about the followers is that I became a part of the community and I looked at people who I thought had good images, images that were worth looking at and saying, hey, this is photography and this is not a picture a photo of my dog doing a backflip. So did you unfollow people that you came across and you didn't like their photography? You unfollowed I me. never followed him. I unfollowed Peter, sorry to say, because... <laughs> I was putting up crap for like two weeks and I get it. He, he's, he's really hard on me about, look, just put up some photos. I don't need the extra talk, but I use mine as a message board sometimes. Right, you write a lot. Sometimes it's funny, though, what you yeah. write. That's what oh, I yeah, tend to respond. It's hilarious, but like I said, at the end of the day, I'm there for images. Right. Anything I look at on the web is for images. The only thing I use my phone for is to make calls and take photos. I don't play games. I don't go on Facebook. I do Instagram right. and I take photos. But what? On my phone. So let's understand it. Was there ever a time that you were following more than four hundred people? Never. Okay. That's, that's a lot of people. Okay. There's so, people who have a hundred thousand followers and they follow a hundred people. Right. So I actually have a lot of. I actually follow right. a lot of people. But, how did you get a dialogue going? How, in other words, again, I'm still trying to understand how did you make your numbers grow? What did we say? It was 27,000, is that right? Yeah. 27,000. Right, so how did you make so your numbers grow that high? So the first thing I high? did, me and um, a buddy of mine who's also on Instagram, his name is Jason Reinhardt, we started a group called Jesco Shoot. And what we did is we weed through the garbage and show you the people who have good images and no followers. Like if you had, a bunch of image, a bunch of great images, 200 great, great images, and you only had 50 people following you, we, we give you some exposure to let people know. And through that, people started to know me for the person who exposes people. So I got a lot of people coming to my page telling me the great things I'm doing. And then about the lot of followers, the way I got the lot of followers, Instagram themselves noticed me. Right. And they made me a suggested user. Absolutely. That means whoever visit Instagram, I'm suggested or to those people. Or a new page. Right. I started a new one, and I see it say turn one, and I'm like, holy crap, that's my cousin. Right. And right there with Oprah Winfrey in... In three days. <laughs> right. He was... Um, I looked at his following and said, he's got 11,000 followers. The next two days, I started an additional Instagram page I'm going to use just for work. I haven't done anything to it yet. I looked again, he had 23,000 followers. So he... 10,000 followers in a matter of three days, right. Instagram is pushing them. I had 3,000 to start. And, right, but um, yeah. how, how many shots are you posting per day to Instagram? <sighs> Anywhere from one to three at the most. Right, that's not a lot. No, no. right. but I, I look for quality, not quantity. And just putting out a good image, don't, don't have a whole bunch of say on the bottom, just your image will speak for so itself. So you tend to not put a lot of commentary at the bottom? No, I just maybe a poem or a hip hop verse, because I am hip hop, right. so I use, tend to put that or, you know, just maybe something small, but I don't mess around with too much writing or candid, I don't take a lot of, well, the iPhone is based off of snapshots, but I don't take a lot of 
pictures of my daughter or my dog or my grass outside and right. breakfast. So let's talk about the shooting process for you because you use the iPhone exclusively for the photography. Yes. Right. Do you tend to capture it using the native camera app or do you capture the images using an actual app? I use an actual app called KitCam. Right. And KitCam, you can adjust exposure, lighting, blah, blah, blah. Now, the iPhone takes great photos right off, but Box, yeah. with this, I can actually control my light more, like if I had an SLR. Right. Right. I use KitCam as well. And light problems and, right. You know, I still like find that. it's a little buggy sometimes. Like you, you slide that exposure to increase the exposure, and then it like sort of resets itself on mine, and it isn't adjusting the exposure properly. So well, it's a little tricky for me at times. I think it's like with any tool that you use, you become used to your settings. You know as soon as you get into a certain concert, it's no flash yeah. and the lighting is like this, you already know what to go to. You're it's hitting like the F-stop, right. you're hitting, you, you got it, you're a photographer, you know what you're doing, you came right. to shoot. And right. That's pretty much how I feel about that. Right. Now how much editing are you doing in post? What are you using apps to edit the stuff or are you normally posting it straight out of the camera? Uh, sometimes I can do a straight raw photo, but most of the time I'll use Snapseed to crop the photo to Instagram size mm -hmm. and I'll do some like color adjustments and then I might if I want a certain look like like a Coda film look, I might go for a VSOC cam. That's another app, and they right. also make an app for Aperture. Right, yeah, they have like the Lightroom popular. presets. That's my stuff. number one app on the iPhone is what I Right. Do. So in terms of shooting, do you go out specifically to shoot the content for Instagram, or are you just walking around and finding the shots? And come a little closer to the mic okay. still, come up yeah, to right um, there. Pretty much, pretty much I have my phone with me every day, and so does everybody. So I'm always shooting. Right. And when I'm not shooting, sometimes I do meet people to go shoot, like today in New York, I'm gonna meet a group of people and... Um, and how, tell me about them. this group, where does this group come from? Um, one guy is coming from North Carolina, he's actually one of the biggest, he has one of the biggest groups on Instagram called AMPT. And those guys, I mean, they started when Instagram first started and they just grew with Instagram and they show nothing but great images. There's right. a lot of garbage on Instagram, as you guys yeah, know. Yeah, so absolutely. We help weed through that garbage and show you images that you would want to actually press the like button on. Right. Yeah, you know, John, John that's funny. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Now, the, the group that you're meeting, is this like a paid thing? Are people paying to be part of this group to come and shoot for the day? Not at all, but what's happening right now with mobile photography is those user counts, like you see I have 27,000. Mm -hmm. If you get up in 100,000, 200,000, these guys are sponsored by Nike, Toyota, right. Land Rover, right. Adidas, right. just because, maybe not because their quality of images, because the number of followers they have, and that's 300,000 people reach you're selling your car to. Right. Right. It's so a big commercial. If right. you're doing something for, um, a hair care product because you obviously you're known for like hype hair right. and then you start to I'm going to take a snapshot and put it up on Instagram and then whoever the hair care product is they have a large following they start to promote you then you have a, a group of people looking right. at then once see, it balloons right. you're getting monetized to say we're going to send John with his camera right. to go cross country in this Toyota car that we're going to give him he's going to take a few snapshots of the Toyota but we really want him to do what right. he naturally does well, you see, personal work right. and, and yeah. shoot in root and what he's doing every right. day. Well, so you see a lot of guys work. that are incorporating that into the like yeah. the bid. They're putting that in when they're bidding for the job. They're like, and I've got X number of Twitter followers, and we're going to be tweeting this. Right. So, so social media is important now. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's when you can make it work like that. As I say, I think the problems I get is kind of like what Ray touched on when Ray said how sometimes it can be a little frustrating looking at certain feeds that you mm -hmm. look at, and then. When I'm looking at the people again who are kind of faking it, it just sort of annoys me. But I think what Kevin is saying is hitting on something that I'm not currently doing with Instagram, yeah. which is actively looking for good imagery and following those people. My thing is generally is I'm following people that cross the path of my life and I'll meet the person and say, that's a cool dude or that's a cool girl. Let me follow that person and just kind of see what he or she is up to as time goes on. Right. But your approach is just completely com different. Completely I'm his different. first cousin. We he was at my mom's house, right. and I didn't take any offense because I could always text him. And he said, right. like, I could check up on you anytime." 
but he unfollowed me and I knew right. why. But it was right. almost like, you know, part of my language and a little bit of an ass with being to say, Pete, right. I Step know you write game, poems almost. and yeah, you know, right. but you're gonna have to give That's because yeah, I know the it. image that he produces. If he was right. just my cousin, I would have probably just unfollowed him and that would have been it. Right. Or maybe I would have kept him and never said anything, but I know what he does, so at least give me half of that. You don't have to right. give me your professional work, right. but give me a personal side right. composure that I know you can do. Right. But believe it or not, I feel like Ray does about social media. Mm -hmm. I just happen to like Instagram because it's photos, and that's what I do. I like right. images. But right. you go to people that you find have quality images, and you don't want to follow any any bull, really. It's more or less, I, I, I'm interested in seeing what your feed looks like. Yeah, I'm going to go see who he is following because I think that's right. an interesting thing to look yeah. at. But again, my thing is always like, especially if I'm in another state, like I was in Oregon, whatever, a week ago. So if I meet some people there, then I just think it's something cool about, like, I'm never going to see this person again because right. I don't think I'm going back that's to okay. Oregon. Two accounts. Right. Uh, please, I barely checked the one I have. <laughs> but, it, you know, if you're looking to work that account to your advantage for to right. make money or you to just get exposure, it. then two yeah. accounts is always the But way does it go. benefit you at all interacting with the people who are taking good photos? Does that make a difference in your followings increasing? I don't think he does it for that. Not to answer his question, you asked Go on, him, no, go on. We talked about this. I'm not necessarily sure that he does it for that. And right. I've picked his brain a lot. He owns a cleaning business, so this is 100% focused around what we talked about when I was here last time, the personal work and how the personal work can turn right. into a situation where it balloon. And right. I was on the phone, I'm like, Kev, I didn't, I didn't foresee this. You always said mobile, and I didn't fight it off, but I'm just like, come on, an iPhone. Right. But then you see this following, and like we talked about the rappers, how they monetize everything. Right. He's not going to say, you know, I'm going to make an approach to... um. Converse to make me a custom hoodie. Right. If They're it happens, see that and hey. go, you know what? Right. We like what you're doing. We love your your perspective. We want to give you ten grand. You can right. still keep your iPhone, but when you carry things around, we want you to just wear this. We want you to do what you do. Right. I don't want to do right. what they do. Right. But and really, from the bottom of my heart, I think that is so cool to just do it straight from the passion. Yep. And I taught high school for eleven years, and I did photography during that entire time, mm -hmm. and. All the photography I did was just because I loved it. It had nothing to do with like, I'm making money at this. It, <clears throat> excuse me. Making money just meant nothing to me. It was just, I love shooting. I love playing with the toys. I love creating. I love going to these different places. I love getting the stuff published, seeing it in a magazine. That was the only reason I shot. And then after 11 years of teaching, I left teaching to become a photographer full time. But it was never motivated by... I can make more money in, te in photography than mm -hmm. teaching, you know, so I did exactly what you were doing, which is just I photographed because I enjoyed shooting. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And when we talk to Ray, like with the personal work, Ray gets so focused on like, if it doesn't make money. It's about the money. Yeah, I don't care. But and Ray could monetize himself the same way. No, I but I just want to see. No, but what I want to see from Ray, and I know Ray can still hear me because he's still in the room. I want to see Ray shooting some stuff from that passion, yeah. just out of the and passion. And it will be unbelievable when he, when it comes out. Because, because Ray's shoot with passion is just. Right. He's, he already knows photography. A camera is like his hand. Absolutely. Oh, so no, yeah. He's a, he's a beast in terms of yeah. being able to execute what's in his head. Mm -hmm. He can do that. But Ray tends to be a very focused, very concrete, very black and white person. It's the coldest and, hustler you've ever seen in your life. Right. And, and like, again, and Ray, you know, he'll be a quiet guy a lot of times right. and he's just in the cut. But Ray's cash and checks while everybody else is up on, not everybody, not like you, Kevin, but a lot of people on my feed and your feed right. are throwing up, oh yeah, I'm shooting and all this nonsense. Right. It's, it's crazy. They're not making what Ray's making. Yeah. You know, but they're all over Twitter with all these right. followings and guy, and there are guys like See, Ray who just I, got Ray, is, Ray is so nice he can actually get somebody to handle his page for and him. That's, yeah, right. and that's what you know. But do. I don't want to see Give that. Them the image no. of them posted. No, what I want to see Ray do though is uh, is putting some effort into something that's just from the heart and from passion with right. no end game in sight. Not thinking, hey, if I do this, it's going to produce a paycheck down the road. Right. Just. The way he does jujitsu, you know, right. he trains jujitsu just like I do, and we have no goal. We're not saying we're going to be on black belts and we're going to win the world championship. We're just like, I That's love training, I yeah. and I would love to see Ray do that photographically, which is something that you're doing, where you're just kind of going, hey, 
I'm on a boat, I don't really care where it's going. I just wanna create good imagery and look at good imagery. So what I'm gonna do as a result, because the whole point of the podcast is to kind of change the way people think and yeah, influence absolutely. people. And it works on me, but I'm telling you right now, I am going to unfollow a ton of people and I'm gonna start following some people that are focused more on imagery yeah. rather than that personal connection. Surprise, man. I'm you gonna see what it does for I me. followed you this morning, but oh, you I did. I hope I did. your whole gallery <laughs> and I mean if you weren't if I wasn't gonna be here today and I never uh -oh. met you, I probably would not follow your feet. Right. But you had a couple of images in there that just it was one of a girl standing at a window. It right. just blew me away. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that I, image is And you know what's funny yeah. about that image? Let me say something about my feet really quick, but yeah. about that particular image, what's funny, I shot that with the Leica and it's using a seven thousand dollar fifty millimeter yeah. Leica lens. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only ones. I mean right. and he does it with an iPhone. Yeah, how funny is that? But the funny thing is what I have to do to, to get a like from this guy is <laughs> right. I gotta take fourteen thousand dollars worth of gear. And it's funny because you know, as pros, and I'm sure you've done this, we always yeah. recommend that people buy a fifty millimeter lens because it's dirt the cheap yeah. and it's your fastest lens in terms Absolutely. of letting in light. Yep. And you know, they're like 125 bucks in there. So it's, a it's a universal lens, eh? Right. Yeah. But like their newest one cost seven thousand dollars and I got my hands on it at this uh, demo thing they were doing and I shot that picture of the girl named Mackenzie and stuff. But the thing about my own Instagram feed is I kind of get mixed as to what I want to post there. So for example, yeah. I don't tend to post a lot of BET stuff. And when I put up a BET picture, for example, it's usually because I have a funny comment to make about it, like yes. an observation. Mm -hmm. And then I don't put like the tear sheets that I get published. I don't tend to put stuff that I think is great. I just kind of get mixed. Sometimes I put the family stuff up. Right. It's like my feet is all over the place. Well, we I see differently, John, as photographers. Even right. if on a walk to BET when you're carrying your gear, you see right. something. No, no, but if see that's no, no. What I'm saying is that in other words, I create those images all the time. Like if you look at my blog, I feel on my. I think if you looked at my blog, you would say every photo there's a good photo. My blog, it's all good photos. Yeah. It's all pictures mm -hmm. that I think are good. Excuse me. My Instagram feed though is more all over the place. Sometimes I am just posting my daughter. It's not as focused as what you're doing. You're very focused. You're going like, I'm only going to post great photos on Instagram. Yes. Whereas Pete does something different. Pete goes, I'm going to put some great photos and I'm going to put my rambling thoughts. I'm going to put right. funny I'm going to put comments. some of my, like, I like to bring the personal, like, I'm not just a robot because I started right. to maintain, get this reputation. I mean, it was locally. Right. Oh, this guy, you know, he hangs out with rappers and all that stuff and he's not following me back. But it's right. just like, Kevin, I don't really want to follow crap. Right. And my, it's not like him. It's pretty much double. I have double the followers and right. I'm just a regular guy, but if you're posting crap, I don't really want to see crap. Right. So, but it, even though sometimes I may post crap, it, just like my cousin said, he doesn't necessarily want to, I, I'm an avid poet, so I write, he doesn't always want to see my poetry. He'd right. rather me just post pictures, which is what made it me right. start the second account. Right. I want to see it on a poetry site. Right. Right. Yeah, you're if it's going to be there, it's going to be there. <laughs> he, he put one up some poem the other day, and right. I, I wrote back, and I said, oh, go out and make some friends. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> he did, he did. Yeah. Yeah. But you're one of the few people I respond to, because sometimes yeah. what you do write is funny, but I'm going to give a try for a while what you're you should suggesting. See. It's a totally, it's a first breath of air. Yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to unfollow the majority of what I'm following, which is a very small number. I'm probably following following like a hundred people and I barely look at it. I post my content and I barely even glance right. at what other people post. It'll I change. just don't You'll care. See, yeah, you feet. gotta be more, I wouldn't say interactive. You don't have to say something about everyone's photo, mm -hmm. but people want to know at the end of the day, it's a community. Mm -hmm. They want to know that you're there. And if you're a photographer, you're in, uh, inspiring me to shoot, to take a better photo because I right. see your photos and I want to strive for that greatness that you have right. and get to the level that you have. Right. But if you're not liking or answering and posting crap. Oh no, see I answer it, everything. It's know. funny because like on YouTube, I've been doing YouTube, I don't know how many years. It feels like 10 years, maybe it's not that long, probably not 10, but I've been doing YouTube a really long time. I put up a lot of instructional videos and things like that. And if you look at my YouTube, I answer every single email that gets posted. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody just goes great video, but anybody who disses the video, anybody who asks a question, I answer every single one of those. And on Twitter, just about, I would say, honestly, completely honest, but 95% of the ads that I receive on Twitter, I respond to. So I definitely do that part of it. It's just, again, I'm following just people that I've casually met who aren't necessarily taking great photos. So then as a result, 
I'm not liking their stuff. But when people comment on my work, I'm always commenting back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, the I'm other thing that, I did is I just didn't focus on the numbers. Right. I, I just focused on images. And I right. feel like anything you do on life, if you focus on your yeah. craft, on what you do, right. it will pay off. Right. right. Well, again, I think I'm definitely willing to do that. The only difference is I think you made a distinction that I did not make and that Pete did not make. And the, the crucial difference, in my opinion, in terms of what we're all doing on Instagram is you're saying I'm only going to post great photographs. You understand? And mm -hmm. Pete, again, is kind of going... I'm going to post great photographs, but in addition, I'm going to give you a sense of who I am as a person. Yep. I'm going to be funny. I'm going to show a picture of me wearing a panda ski mask mm -hmm. and just make you laugh. And I'm going to write my rambling thoughts and let you know who I am, which is nothing wrong with that. Nothing right. at all, because I think Pete has a good Instagram feed, which is called? Um, it's Fly Life Images, F-L-Y Life Images. Right. And then on my feed, mine is just something that I don't give enough thought to it. It's just a mix of, like I said, sometimes it's Leica images, which are my real photos that I put up through an iFi card, like the one you mm -hmm. like. Yes. Other times it's the iPhone. Other times I'm trying to be funny. It's Mine's all over the place. But I think what I'm going to try for a little while is kind of what you're doing. Just focus a little better. Focus on just posting good photos and see what that does or where that goes and if I enjoy that. It'll make your feed better. Yeah. People will know who you are based off the personal work that you you right. add up there. Like I'm not normally a portrait shooter, but right. I can shoot a portrait right. with my SLR or iPhone, but that's not my thing. People know right. I like the streets, I like graffiti, I right. like hip hop, I like toys. Yeah. So that comes across in my photos, right. I, I think, I hope. And I'm the exact opposite yeah. from you because I don't shoot hardly anything that doesn't have a person in it. I don't care about lines yeah, and colors. I shoot a lot of people. Textures. People. You know, and I shoot people. I mean, I'm on the subway and I'm as close as I am to Pete now, which is like three or four feet, and I'm photographing people. Sometimes they know, sometimes they don't and I'm gonna do a podcast one day about street photography because most people that. don't know how to do it and the, oh, the people oh, part they don't know how to shoot people and it like some people uh, obviously you're taking good photos without people but a lot of people are just cheating they're not shooting people because they're scared so right. the easy route for them is to just go shoot some lines and some colors and some buildings and I would challenge some of those people and go do you care about that? Like, do you care about textures and right. lines and signs? Right. And If you look at you my know, feed, I've got quite a bit right. of photos with people in it. Right. Yeah, and see, I, yours, again, I not that people. familiar because... I, I do a mix of, mm -hmm. if I see a building out I like, and mm -hmm. the way it's shot, it might catch my eye, but really, I like street photography right. with people. Right. I probably don't shoot as much as somebody who would shoot that style, right. Right. but it's my if you had a gallery like that, I would love it. Right. Well, again, so, I have yeah. it. It's just, it's on my blog. Yeah, exactly. It's That's different it. places. Why it's just not... blog stuff and put it on Instagram? I would because, email myself to, to write the phone. Honestly. Because I always looked at Instagram as being a visual diary, and I tried to some degree right. to do... And if you remember, That's how I do it. There was a time that it was almost not considered correct to put up an SLR picture, you know, on your Instagram feed that it you were supposed is. to use the iPhone. But see, the problem <laughs> is this. Mm. I don't like shooting with the iPhone, and my reason is different than most people's reason for it. Tell them why, John. Here we go. <laughs> I don't like shooting with the iPhone because I find that it is so easy, it takes the fun out of photography for me. Yeah. It's as if when I use the Leica, and I talked about the beginning of this podcast, there's these limitations. You can't focus close. You have to manually focus. It takes a long time to take, like it's quicker to shoot with the iPhone than my Leica. Right. But for me, using the Leica is like being on a motorcycle. Like imagine a guy, he's on a Harley, which is a super expensive motorcycle written by guys who love riding motorcycles. If you said to that guy, dude, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put you in a limousine, you can sit back with a glass of champagne, and we're going to get you to your destination. He's going to say no. He wants to ride the motorcycle. Well, he likes riding the motorcycle. So for me, being on an iPhone, it's so easy to shoot that the exposure is always good. It's so fast. It's quiet. You can shoot high up, low, left, right. You can move it so easy. It just kills all the fun of photography for me. I Yes and no. I just believe anybody who says that, I challenge them in right. low light situations. Shoot at night. Right. I want to see you streak some car, some, some, right. uh, but you know, low light as situations. As difficult as it may seem to shoot the iPhone in low light, I assure you, it's more difficult to shoot the Leica in low light oh, I, because I, yeah. you're setting shutter and aperture and you're trying to focus and it's dark. The iPhone is an easier camera, for me at least. When I produce iPhone pictures, when I first started shooting with it, I liked, I had a higher like ratio for myself of what I was producing. 
and, and I know I'm crazy when I say stuff like this, but it just kills the fun. It's no I, fun. I totally get your idea, but I, I don't agree 100% with it. I understand what you're saying. Any, anyone, it, it's going to take great photos off the bat, but I don't think any, it's because you're a photographer, you already know how to compose a photo. Right. Before, before I shoot a photo, I already shot the photo. Right, it's in your head. Yeah, it's in right. my head, so it doesn't matter the tool. Yeah. I, I, you know, right. just right. See, and, is, and, so. and I wouldn't suggest that everyone is taking great photos with the iPhone. I, I'm not trying to say it's a great camera and everybody yeah, takes great pictures. No, it, it's technical, dude. Right. I, have a, I honestly have a tough time. And he right. doesn't use just one. I mean, you said like right out of the box that, that the iPhone does shoot with the camera. Until he told me about KitCam and the other things I could do, right. it's added some difficulty because I'm shooting stuff and I'm inspired by what he's doing. And I'm like, how did Kevin do that? Right. And I'm in the subway. I'm at work, of course. And I'm trying to get it right. It's right. difficult. I find it a little bit harder in a sense to control everything on the iPhone as opposed no, to I can see, go right to my Sony yeah, and two clicks I'll just of say, the shutter. My last thing on it, again, I do a lot of street photography. My, the main focus for me is couples. I love to get couples interacting with each other and mm -hmm. I've shot tons of it. A lot of it's on my blog, some is on my main site. But to do that with the Leica, for example, I've got to lift that to my eye and focus. And in yeah. that amount of time, Believe me, I get caught a lot. People looking at me like, you're taking a picture of us? And now I've got to either walk away or say, hey, you guys look amazing. You know, let me just get this shot. And I and interact with them sometimes. I'm so against people who shoot from the viewfinder on an SLR. Oh, no. Right, but that's I, what totally, I do. You have to. Like, what are you doing? But, you need to, you know, yeah. shoot from the eyepiece and not the screen. No, right, but that's I what I'm doing. Taught to right, well, again, so, but yeah. what I'm saying is, though, that is such a long, slow process that if I take my iPhone, I can just pretend I'm talking on a phone. I can pick it up for two seconds, act like I'm fiddling with it, and nail the shot. And I've done it on occasion when I don't have the Leica with me. And I see a cool shot, I go, man, I just gotta get this one. So I'll whip out the iPhone and I'll nail the shot. But again, I don't get the same satisfaction because it's just so easy to capture the shot on the iPhone that it's not fun for me. I don't feel that same sense of accomplishment like I did something. I just feel like, boy, that was easy. I just pushed one button and boom, the exposure's right. The picture's good, it's in focus. It's but again, that's a personal thing. I'm not suggesting. I, I guess other my goal take is, is when uh, people look at my photos, they don't right. know that that was shot on an iPhone. They say right. you shot that yeah, on what? No right. Way. But but you again, shot that on an iPhone. Right. But see you again. Know? But that's like again. It's just the difference between the guy on the Harley who's enjoying the ride to the destination versus somebody who just wants to get to work. <laughs> you know, you don't care how you got there. You just want yeah. to get to work. You, the the right. point is I got to work. But for me, it's not about the final picture only. It's about shooting the picture because I, I like taking the picture. Yeah. So for me, I enjoy it when I shoot it with the Leica. If I shoot it with the iPhone, I just don't enjoy it. It's just I've not been, fun. I've been shooting from a Kodak Brownie right. uh, lately. So, you know, that's a challenge too. Right. It's an easy shot, oh, of but it's course. still a that's, challenge. That's extremely you difficult. Know, so you know? I, right. just, right. I guess everybody's different. I right. just like all different. That's I like the beauty. SLRs, I like uh, right. camera phones. It doesn't make a difference. Right. But I yeah. respect what you've yeah. accomplished on Instagram is amazing. I will be looking at your Instagram feed. I'm going to be following it. I'm going to change my Instagram feed based on this conversation that we just had. So I thank you for coming and I thank Pete for bringing him down. Oh, cool. It was you so know? spontaneous too. I yeah. called yeah. him. I was like, yeah. oh, my, co my cousin's coming down. I'm like, Kev, what are you doing? I don't want yeah. nothing. I was like, Good. I literally <laughs> just got off the bus. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. And yeah, so. you're shooting something today, so I wish you luck yeah, in the city. Well, I wish you. I could come with you, but I've got kind of some family stuff to do. Yeah, Easton. And, <laughs> yeah, and then I don't have my Leica with me and I right. don't want to shoot it on the phone. I would love to have a Leica. <laughs> yeah. So wait, how can people find you, Kev? Uh, Instagram.com slash turn one. Spell it for us. Spell it. Spell the whole thing. Uh, T-U-R-N-O-N-E. Beautiful. Turn one. Uh, Pete, where do we find you? Um, I'm online at uh, flylifeimages.com, and that's F-L-Y-L-I-F-E-I-M-A-G-E-S.com. Also, the same hashtag on Twitter, at flylifeimages, and Instagram as well. And I can be found in random bars enjoying beer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and for me, you can find me on Instagram, and I'm going to have this amazing Instagram feed from now on based on this conversation. And you can find that it's John Ricard, J-O-H-N-R-I-C-A-R-D. And Ray, you cannot find Ray on Instagram, yeah. Facebook. He's on Facebook, but it's like a private thing. But I'm going to be running Ray's page. You need to. Yeah. to hook Ray, up we're going to talk, talk to We're going to see if we can <laughs> right. have Ray come to some conformity. Right. But 
the way you really find Ray, and as much as I love what you do, I love what Ray does too. You find Ray on the street shooting. Street New York. And if you ever want to see Ray stuff, you go to GettyImages.com and then just search Ray Tamara, R-A-Y-T-A-M-A-R-R-A. And it's like you're going to see more celebs from like one week than most of us have shot in a month. You know, because yeah. again, he is out there a lot and Ooh. I respect that as much as I respect the guys who shoot it without making money because I've done both. I shoot for money, I've shot without money. I love it all, all right? Yeah. So thank you guys for coming well, on and uh, we'll me. probably have you back at some point. Okay. So, yeah, you know, we'll thank you. Back, thank and you. Pete will be back at some point and we'll yeah. see everybody later on. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Have a good one.